Hey folks, how you doing? Dave McRae here. Okay, in this video, I wanna talk about the ending of the opening scene to John Carpenter's Halloween from 1978. And the reason why I wanna talk about the ending to the opening scene is because um, although it's getting better, I still think there are enough people that still don't understand uh, why Carpenter made the creative choice he made um, in terms of executing the ending of the opening scene in the way that he did, if you follow me. Um, like I said, I think it's getting better. I think there are a lot of people that, that are beginning to understand it. I think there are a lot of people that have always understood it, but I still think there are enough people that don't, um, which is why I wanted to do this video. And um, because I see people, you know, whether it's online, on the forums, on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube, people, you know, reviewing the movie, watching the movie, uh, you know, whatever the case is, when it gets to this moment, I still, there are enough people, it comes up on a, at least a semi-regular basis from people who I, I still aren't quite understanding why this is happening. So, like I said, I'm talking about the ending of the opening scene. So I'm talking about when Michael Myers comes down the stairs after killing Judith, opens the front door, walks out onto the front lawn, the parents show up, the mom and dad get out of the car, the dad walks over to Michael, Michael takes off the clown mask and ba ba it's six-year-old Michael, oh my God, it's a child, holy shit, right? And the camera pulls back and upwards, clearly a, you know, a crane shot, more than likely, um, and it pulls back and back and back. It's a beautiful moment in time, right? And it ends, and scene kind of thing, right? Uh, it's a great shot, really spooky. But for a lot of people, I still to this day in 2018 see a lot of people uh, saying, I don't understand it. Why are the parents just standing there? Why, why isn't the dad saying anything? Why isn't the mom grabbing her child and being like, Michael, what did you do? I don't get it. I don't understand it. And then you have other people going, well, maybe they were in shock and you know, maybe they were just so horrified by what they saw that they didn't know what to do and all this kind of stuff. It's neither of those things, okay? What this is illustrating is in more or less, you don't really see this in movies, in motion pictures, really. Um, but in stage acting, you do. At least you used to a long time ago. Um, I took a lot of drama classes. I have uh, a diploma in acting. I've been on improv teams. I've done all sorts of plays. And I can tell you, this is, you know, a movie version of what we would call a tableau, okay? And essentially in layman's terms, what a tableau is, is it's a moment in time. So it's when actors would get on stage and they would, um, you know, do a scene being still and not moving, but it's a representation of a moment in time from something in history, uh, something classical, something, you know, whatever. It doesn't have to be. It could be something current. Um, but like, for example, say uh, we wanted to do a tableau of somebody throwing a 30-yard touchdown, right? So on the stage, we'd get like, you know, Bob to go over there and go like this, you know, with the football, right? And then you would go to like the front of the stage and you'd be like this, you know, getting ready to accept the pass. And then we'd get some people, you know, on the sidelines going like this, you know, cheering, right? And then you'd get like, you know, I don't know, Julie to go over there and go like this, you know, so she's blowing the whistle, you know, whatever the case is, right? And you just hold that pose. And it's like, it's a, it's a snapshot. It's a moment in time. And that's what's referred to as a tableau. Well, this is supposed to be the movie version of a tableau. This is why John Carpenter executed the creative this is why John Carpenter executed that moment in the way that he did, is because he wanted to capture a snapshot in time of the contrast with what you're seeing. So here we have this six-year-old child with this blank, pale, emotionless, no, I feel like I need to go into that after I say this six-year-old child. But here we have this six-year-old kid, okay, who has this knife that's practically the size of him, cute little boy, and he's holding it there and he's like, Right. And then we have the parents on either side of them and they're like, you know, now I know they're moving. I know. I, th I think you, I think you can see the mom put her hand in her pocket. Um, I know they're moving, but they're holding their place. OK, this is supposed to represent that moment in time, that snapshot in time. So imagine if somebody just went and took that. It's like, whoa. 
right? Because here you have, you know, these parents that look respectable, well-dressed. You have this six-year-old boy, cute little kid holding this massive butcher knife with blood all over it. Here you have this, you know, quaint little wartime home behind him, right? That looks kind of quaint. You know, they're in, you know, this small, you know, American town, right? On this nice little street, but it's the contrast with something horrific that you as the viewer have just seen. If Michael was holding a can of Pepsi, it changes everything, right? But he's holding a butcher knife with blood all over it. And you take that snapshot, you take that moment in time with everything else around it that seems ordinary and normal and combine that with what you've just witnessed as the viewer. And it's like, whoa, like this is, that's freaky. Like I'm getting goosebumps. Like that's just like this, something's wrong here. There's something wrong with this child. There's something, something's not right. So it's supposed to, that's what it's supposed to represent. That's why Carpenter made the creative choice he did. What you were looking at is a tableau, is a moment in time, a snapshot in time. And the camera pans back and you're just watching this moment like as if it's a photograph. Now, like I said, you can actually see the mom, I believe, put her hands in her pocket. You can see, you know, the knife kind of, you know, going like this a bit or whatever. There, are, It's obviously not a still frame. It's not a frame that they've taken and just, you know, placed it there. Um, but that's what it's supposed to represent. It's supposed to represent that snapshot in time of the contrast of what you've just witnessed, what you're seeing now outside with this nice little home and these two respectable parents and this six-year-old child because when you first watched the movie back in 1978 you would not necessarily have thought that what you know what you're seeing through the POV was a six-year-old kid or a kid right okay obviously you didn't know he was six until Loomis mentions it later but you wouldn't expect that it was a kid right just in the same ways that you probably wouldn't have expected that the murderer in Friday the 13th was you know a woman was Jason's mom, right? So it's that kind of bum bum moment and we hold it there. And now you have all the beautiful contrast that what you just saw, what you're seeing, the parents, the knife, you know, the uh, nice little home, all that shit. So that's what it's supposed to represent. It's a tableau. It's a moment in time. I have no doubt that if we were to not have that moment in time and not sort of freeze frame, yeah, the mom would be like, oh my God, Michael, you know, what have you done? You know, and the dad would be like, Judith, Judith, are you all right? You know, whatever the case is, right? But we haven't got to that yet. You know, we haven't got to that because we were, we froze on the moment. As soon as the dad goes, Michael, and takes it off, it's like, right? That's what it's like. It's like, it's that moment in time. It's a, it's, it's a stage play. It's that moment in time. It's a tableau. Um, and it works very well. And if that was, to, you know, I mean, if that was to be executed today, um, it probably wouldn't be executed today. But if you were to execute that today, you would probably, it would probably to relay to the audience that that's exactly what you were doing you would probably have another creative way of doing it, whether, you know, through visual effects, through an actual, you know, or whatever the case is, right? But I love it. I think it's great. It's a cool moment in time. That's what it is. So for everybody out there who is saying, you know, I don't understand it. Why are, they, why are they not saying anything? Why are they not doing anything? This makes no fucking sense. If this was my kid, I'd be like, holy shit, what the hell is this? It's a tableau, okay? That's why they're not doing anything. It's a snapshot of that moment, of that horrific reveal. That's what it is. Now you know. My name's Dave McRae. If you want to follow me on Facebook, you can at facebook.com slash many things Dave McRae. The link is in the description as well. If you want to help support the channel each and every month via Patreon, we're up to 62 patrons right now. If we can get to 100 patrons, all your, it doesn't matter which tier you choose, all your names will be entered into a draw to win a 12 and a half inch replica Lampson Michael Myers knife. Doesn't matter. And if you want to get on the Halloween only live AMA, you have to choose level number three, the Halloween only only live AMA twice a month leading up to the release of the movie and probably after that as well called Thorazine that I hold twice a month but it's exclusive to level number three patrons only and the link is in the, in the, the link is in the description too so uh, check that out uh, in the meantime and in between time I'll talk to you guys soon cheers cheers